This is the introductory lecture of the University of Toronto at Scarborough series based on my book, The Aesthetics of Emotion, Up the Down Staircase of the Mind-Body, published by Cambridge University Press. The series includes nine lectures that are related to the book, that go a step beyond the book, and also a series of interviews with artists who discuss their work in one of the chapters in my book. Now we have an image of scholars as somewhat isolated characters surrounded by books and other materials as they do their writing of articles and books. It's a kind of silent dialogue between them and their intellectual communities. This is true to a point, but we also enjoy scholarly communication with students and colleagues in very different settings, some classical and others even built of recycled materials. My voyage has been dedicated to building bridges between diverse communities and ideas. The poem Ithaca by Constantine Cavafy offers a metaphorical account of my scholarly voyage. Here are some lines set against the backdrop of images of the Temple of Poseidon in Sunio, outside of Athens. The painting of Poseidon on the cover of my book by Tony Sherman embodies the depth of human emotion and gives us a sense for the realities of emotional communication. Ithaca. As you set out for Ithaca, hope the voyage is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery. Lestragonians and Cyclops, angry Poseidon, don't be afraid of them. You'll never find things like that on your way, as long as you keep your thoughts raised high, as long as a rare excitement stirs your spirit and your body. Hope the voyage is a long one. May there be many a summer morning when with what pleasures, what joy, you come into harbor seen for the first time. And may you visit many Egyptian cities to gather stores of knowledge from their scholars. Keep Ithaca always in your mind. Arriving there is what you are destined for. But do not hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years. So you're old by the time you reach the island, wealthy with all you have gained on the way, not expecting Ithaca to make you rich. These lectures track the highlights of my intellectual voyage. They're meant to stimulate ideas and conversations, since the goal of scholarly communication is to bridge ideas and communities. Fundamental bridges link the sciences and the humanities. Other bridges are conceptual as between different approaches to emotion theory. In my book, and the series of lectures related to it, I treat seemingly opposing approaches to emotion as in fact complementary. One approach focuses on motivated actions linked to feelings of pleasure and arousal. In this case, the body provides activating energy and facilitates focus while salient experiences of pain or pleasure monitor the outcome. Indeed, language helps us identify salient bodily states in a logical manner, according to this view. The other approach describes emotional reactions to meaningful situations that can be traced back to our mammalian past, to our childhoods. Bodily recollections of these meaningful life episodes are reawakened and unconsciously shape the parameters of experience, plasticity in time and space, awareness of material sensation, connection or disconnection with others. But in both cases, mind is shaped by bodily processes given situations and needs. Now, how can an appreciation of aesthetic processes help us better understand these different emotional dynamics? In essence, I argue that there is an analogy between aesthetic and affective processes. Relations between subject matter and art and style, in story, in film, 
are analogous to those between mind and body and emotion. These lectures offer a preview of my book, which explores these themes and dynamics in great depth. With one foot in descriptive experiences of art and everyday life, and the other foot in psychological and neural models. Here's a brief overview of the lecture series. Lecture 1 examines relations between science and the humanities with the purpose of showing ways in which scientists and artists are different and yet similar. Lecture 2 addresses what it means to think critically and emphasizes the importance of grounding our theories about emotion and aesthetics in lived world episodes and processes. Lecture 3 describes how we achieve goals through pragmatic action and traces the origins of these principles to the British Enlightenment. Lecture 4 examines reactions to personally and socially meaningful situations in relation to the German Romantic tradition. Lecture 5 brings things together in a complementary way. It introduces emotional phase theory, which treats action and reaction models as interrelated, as complementary. The central idea is that emotions emerge from feelings and affects in meaningful situations. Indeed, changes in bodily states, which are below the threshold of our awareness, provide the background, shape, and form for our emotional experiences. Lecture 6 turns to the origins of art during the Upper Paleolithic period more than 30,000 years ago and shows how modern these image makers were in their styles of depiction. I also propose that being moved by art is central to art creation because people have to be responsive to the artwork and it can be tied to the emergence of empathy in the landscape of emotion. In Lecture 7 and 8, I consider the aesthetic imagination from Cognitive, Lecture 7, and Emotional, Lecture 8, Perspectives. The cognitive side processes information and the emotional side resonates to it. They too are complementary. Sometimes we actively choose aesthetic works and media products to modulate our states of pleasure and arousal, as when we are bored, or need to vicariously feel social contact. At other times, we react in a deeper emotional way to works that resonate with personally meaningful life experiences and temporarily release those emotions. Lecture 9 seeks to bring harmony to the two sides in the title of my book, The Aesthetics of Emotion, colon, up the down staircase of the mind-body. The Aesthetics of Emotion reviews analogous processes in aesthetic and affective worlds and episodes. Up the down staircase of the mind-body examines the role of metaphor in shaping our experience of emotion in art and in everyday life. Artistic style and bodily changes that are below the threshold of awareness, we don't notice them directly, provide a context in which the subject matter of art and life are experienced. Now for those who are primarily interested in art, I might suggest watching Lecture 1 on relation between science and the humanities before jumping to Lecture 6 and the origins of art, continuing on to the cognitive and emotional side before the synthesizing final chapter. Then you can turn to my video recorded interviews with artists whose works are discussed in the book. These interviews offer an in-depth account and exploration by the artists themselves of what is meaningful and motivates them in their work. The goal here is to enjoy, have fun, and good luck to us all as we approach and explore the relations between art and everyday life. Thanks very much for joining this series.